people have waited decades for this fight. It's not gonna be easy. Yeah. Shut the f up. Okay, good luck. I'm a huge fan. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 11 of No Late Fees. As always, we got myself, we got Leo V, and joining us for tonight, we got Josh Lippman from the Josh Plays With Himself toy show on the channel. What's going on, everyone? What's going on? What's up, fellas? What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm saying hello to you like I wasn't just with you for the last, like, fucking four hours. Yeah. <laughs> did we go and see this movie together? Or are we yes, we did. Videos? So we just got back from the theater. Uh, we just saw Deadpool Wolverine and... We're going to get into spoilers, so here's the spoiler warning. I'm not going to be dancing around, uh, you know, vague comments about the movie. We're just going to jump right into it. Overall, what do you guys think? Overall, solid movie. Me personally, I think there was a good combination of pulling from the Marvel source material that's out there, the shows that they have, the movies they have, the universe as a whole, and then also just throwing everything out the window and saying, it's Deadpool, we can do whatever the f*** we want. I, I kind of feel the same way. To me, it's a fan service. You know, it's everything you expect from a Deadpool movie. I thought it was a good movie overall, honestly. It's a Deadpool movie. He says fuck a lot. What do you want? All right, I'll be the opposite side of the coin. I thought it was very average. I thought it was maybe a five or a six, slightly above average. I think it was overhyped. I think the media for this fucking movie was brilliant. The The hype for this movie, the, the trailers, the merchandise, this movie is everywhere right now being promoted. I think this movie, for the most part, especially for something that we've wanted for, what, 20 years, 15 years since, when did X-Men Origins come out? Whenever that movie came out, you've wanted like a proper, you wanted like a proper Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool Wolverine movie, and we got it, and I think it fell short. I, I think it fell short. I, I think Deadpool doesn't work in the whole, A, will happen B needs to happen for the end of the world not to happen. I'm tired of the multiverse shit. I'm tired of the time traveling shit. Give me a, a self-contained, gritty story. I mean, it had the violence. The violence and the choreography for the action scenes, top notch. I think the blood CG could have used a little work and it kind of took me out of it because the blood looked ridiculously fake. This movie makes fun of the multiverse stuff, but then the main plot of the movie is multiverse heavy. You know what I mean? So like you're, you're kind of making fun of the thing that your whole plot is leaning against. Let's talk about the plot real quick. So he needs to find a version of Logan that is still around because the the Logan from the Logan movie is dead. He tries to dig him up in the beginning and he says that he can regenerate. And that's where we get the fight scene of him using his like adamantium skeleton. The makeshift claws that just get stuck. Dude, he stabs a guy in the asshole and the, and the dick. <laughs> there, was like, there was like three or four stabs in the assholes or dicks. And it kind of, I, I think it was overused. I mean, like, no one wants to see someone get stabbed in the asshole, but, like, after seeing it three or four times, you're like, okay, that's I, like getting... I didn't even notice it more than when he stabbed him in the asshole and in the dick, and he was doing back and forth. That's the only He's... time I saw it. Maybe there, I was... There was, there was definitely there was a couple, a couple of there. them. Like, there was one where, like, they landed on something. He's like, oh, I got my, my claw in my ass. <laughs> getting my knife out of your buttocks. <laughs> there was one where, like, where, like, they fell, and he casually said he had a claw in his ass. And then the other one, like, he charged Logan, and Logan just goes... Bah, right up into his fucking like that ball and area. In, his, in his gooch yeah it probably hit a ball or two you know what i mean like probably they regenerate every single time no matter what happens to them that the fight just feels numb oh they're gonna fight again let's put let's put on an upbeat fucking pop song and let's watch them beat the shit out of each other for three minutes while dropping some f-bombs and making fun of each other until we have to get back to the main plot deadpool doing in sync bye 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 and also that was funny yes ass. that was fantastic that was i enjoyed that more than i expected myself to so like if that's if that's how you're gonna start us off honestly let's go i think i like that fight scene more than the the couple fight scenes that him and wolverine had when he fought the TVA guys, that was fantastic. Maybe the song hyped it up a little more because it was fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Did anyone else notice that there was way too much slow motion in the fight scenes? It reminded me of, like, how Zack Snyder tends to do a lot of his cuts in action scenes. And I think it works if kept on a leash. If you overdo it, I, I think it stands out. And I, I kind of noticed that there was a lot of slow motion. I didn't really notice scene. much slow motion. There wasn't enough to where I noticed it and it was a problem. I'm going to go the opposite. I would like to see a little bit more of slow motion. Because, really? Because some of the choreography is so good now that I want to actually be able to appreciate it and not have it be 
feel like it's one and a half times like bah, 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 bah. he'd love so, like, black adam he would love rebel moon then and rebel <laughs> Maybe not all of it has to be in slow motion, but, like, give me the good moments in slow motion. Okay, I see what you're saying now. But I, I feel like with this movie, it wasn't, like, high-impact stuff or something that was super impressive that was slow motion. It would be, like, one, two, three, bah, one, two, three, four, bah, I did bah, notice bah. They, maybe they did a little bit of that, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think in, like, Sin City or, like, 300, the slow motion works. I wasn't expecting the TVA to have as big of a role as they ended up having. They're they're pretty important in this movie. We get the the guy Paradox, who is a fucking paper thin villain in my opinion, and they get sent to the void where all the 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 variants that they don't want to exist in the main timeline are like kind of banished off to. And we get that weird smoke dragon thing from the Loki show that really doesn't play a big factor. But then that's, we meet that's Smog from Lord of the Rings, isn't that is that a Smog, right? <laughs> we meet Cassandra Nova, who is Professor X's twin, who tried yeah. killing him in the womb in the comics. She's actually a kind of a okay, like C rate villain. She's stronger than him, isn't she? Uh, I, I, like on I mean, the same kind of whenever she she is on the same level as him she is a omega villain or um yeah, yeah. omega level mutant this is a whole another discussion for another thing i i don't like tokenized characters like lady deadpool and lady venom and miles morales spider-man and supergirl and batwoman and the the evil twin of the other character that you like i, I don't know uh, so i i think she's just kind of just like a lazy version of professor x just female and evil this movie is very, very cameo heavy. Like I told you while we were sitting there, Josh, that I feel like a lot of them missed because this movie is very focused on paying tribute and tapping the nostalgia buttons for the Fox X-Men movies, the, the, the Fox Fantastic Four movies, the Fox Daredevil movies, like, like that whole like early 2000s, mid 2000s like type superhero comic book movies the start of of the marvel yeah, universe yeah. it wasn't really the universe yet she has basically the entire c villain cast from like the the x-men movies you're gonna bring all these characters back but the only ones that you that you brought back the actual actors for is Sabretooth and pyro everyone else is recast everyone else either is just there and has no lines or you know is a is kind of a similar look-alike i said a toad actor isn't the same Toad is fucking no. Ray Park, dude. That's Darth Maul. Leo, in the trailers, they've been building up the... You've been waiting for this for 10 years, Sabretooth versus Wolverine rematch type thing. That took like three seconds. You fucking behead him in, in three seconds just I to play... I think that was a joke. Well, 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 they played it off as a joke to do a Mad Max bit. Behold! The head of your precious queen, Furiosa! Without that, we wouldn't have uh, the great Chris Evans cameo. We get a cameo where it kind of feels like it's building up towards uh, him being Captain America, like a, a, a variant of, of, of Cap. And then that also hand comes out. Yeah, he, he thinks he's going to say Avengers Assemble and he says Flame On. Oh my God, he's going to say it! Hey, what? Avengers Assemble! Flame On! Sorry, what now? And all of his clothes burn away and it's Chris Evans as Johnny Storm. One of my biggest problems with this movie is, obviously, it's a Disney production, and it's no secret that Disney has been fucking putting out dog shit the last, like, five years or so, on all levels. It's just my opinion. Maybe you guys disagree with certain things, but... No, I agree. So, they make... I Dude, I have in my notes, I have, like, probably six or seven times, the constant MCU jokes are lame. Welcome to the MCU, by the way. You're joining at a bit of a low point. Another lame MCU joke. Hanging isn't new for me, Fred, though, but it is for Disney. Look, another lame MCU joke. Fox killed him. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. <laughs> another lame MCU joke. Till you're 90. Another lame Disney joke. They they just they just kind of started beating that whole thing where I don't think it was funny. I think the MCU jokes were funny in the first Deadpool movie because <laughs> it's like another team talking shit about their rival team. So if you have Disney who is making this movie talking shit about Disney and Kevin Feige and uh, the woke backlash and, you know, the, the handful of jokes they said in the movie, it's not funny. It's, it's look, guys, look, look, we're, we're, we're going to make fun of ourselves, but then we're not going to change what we're doing and we still do the same shit. But that's just Deadpool. Deadpool is going to break the fourth wall. Hey, I'm part of Fox. Disney fucked up. Hey, Disney's trash. We haven't had a good movie in four years. But so so it is funny on the surface of Deadpool talking shit about Disney. But then who's who's paying the bill? 
with any good idea, whether it's a slow motion like we were talking about earlier or the jokes breaking the fourth wall or the F-bombs, I think you have to do it in small doses or it just gets to be too much and it doesn't have the same effect. As far as MCU movies since Endgame, this and No Way Home are right there by by far. Not well, even yeah. fucking close. MCU, Other than No Way Home. Yeah, No Way Home and, and, and this are, are right there. It's weird that it's taken like 20 years to get Wolverine in a screen accurate suit. And don't get me wrong, I fucking love the suit. I, I love the fact that they put him back in the mask and they actually showed it on screen. But again, it's something like we're going to make fun of ourselves, but then we're going to do the same thing coming back again. One of the constant punchlines throughout the movie is him poking fun at him about his costume, about the colors, about it being too bright about it taking X amount of years to do it. And you know, there's a handful of lines of him talking shit about Logan's costume. And then when he finally puts the hood on it at the end, he puts the cow on, he's like, oh my God, 20 years it took to do this. And it's supposed to be impactful, but you kind of already like knocked it down a couple pegs every time you shit made on him the whole time. Yeah. Like... Yeah. <laughs> I think the funniest scene in the entire movie for me anyway, was not intentionally funny, but I was fucking laughing my ass off. 20 years we've been waiting for you to get in this suit. It only took 20 years or something like that, uh, Deadpool says, when he finally puts the cowl on. Dude, he looks awesome at first. Mowing motherfuckers down, and he has a cowl on. And there's, there's, there's a scene where him and Wade are trying to figure out who's going who's gonna to sacrifice himself to save the timeline that Cassandra Nova is trying to destroy. And his eyes are fucking up here. And he turns, and he's... He's looking at him like, he's, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice myself. And you ruined it for me. I was looking at the suit, and I was like, something's off a little bit, but I'm like, okay, maybe it's, I'm not used to seeing it on screen, the you know comic-accurate Wolverine cowl. <laughs> he, he turns to me, dude, his eyes are over here, and I'm like, I can't, see, I can't unsee it now. Yeah, I, see I, it. I, I literally whisper, I'm like, yo, is it just me, or is his eyes like on his hairline? <laughs> <laughs> his fucking eyes are up here, and it's supposed to be a dead serious moment, and his fucking eyes are over here. Couldn't now, see here's, that. here's my thing. Was that cowl <laughs> really there the whole time? Because I, I, know. Guess, I, I know. guess I would have to go back and, and look at it again. But as, as far like as I recall, was. you see like just like, you know, yeah, his neck he, right there. he randomly did this and then you see the, the mask <laughs> and he does that. I'm like, so maybe he had it tucked or something. But as I would have to go back and look, but I don't recall it's seeing it just hanging. Down. I did pop for that at first. I popped for it and it was cool until I saw those fucking eyes looking like a goddamn ant. I was fucking dying. I was fucking tearing up. Everyone's like watching the, like the action pack scene. I go, dude, look at his fucking eyes. Fucking ruined the moment for me. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the topic of the suits, there's a couple Wolverine variants that we met earlier in the movie when he's trying to find uh, this version of Logan. You see old man Logan, there's uh, Logan with the eye patch on, which looks like the, the Hulk and him cover. There's a, a cover of him and Hulk where he has an eye patch on. And then we get, what is it? It's it's not first appearance. It's Wolverine 340, the one with the three claws, and you see Hulk in the reflection. And I was actually wrong earlier. I was talking about how, why wasn't he wearing the whiskers? Why wasn't he wearing the whiskers? That's the first appearance one. I was getting him confused for some reason. Oh, but, that's why. That's so why. He, has, he has the brown and orange suit on from the Hulk 340 cover, him in the reflection, Hulk in the reflection of his claws, which is an awesome pull. Definitely that was appreciate cool. That, that was definitely one yeah. of the better uh, scenes that you saw. We get a Henry Cavill cameo, which yes, kind of, I, I, I like Henry Cavill a lot, and they make a joke about, you know, come to us and, and we'll treat you better than the guys across the street, you know, referencing the way DC yes. fired him. But I think that kind of that kind of puts the stamp on that Henry Cavill's not going to be Wolverine in the future. Because there's been rumors of him being the next Logan, just like how John Krasinski was rumored to be Reed Richards, and then we saw him in uh, was it Doctor Strange? It was Multiverse in, of Madness. Yeah, yeah, we saw him in Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness, and then he didn't come back. And they cast uh, Pedro Pascal. One of the times I did laugh was when we saw the little fucking midget Wolverine. <laughs> midget Wolverine, yeah. <laughs> he, he sees this guy sitting at a bar, fucking jacked, and Yo, all of a sudden no. he, ju <laughs> he jumps off the bar stool. The bar stool is to like here on. Well, him. that's well, that's accurate height for a wolverine right there <laughs> i mean he's not wrong he's not wrong wolverine is super short in the comics the logan we get is basically a piece of shit he yes. blames himself for the death of the rest of the x-men 
and he's not a hero and I'm not the person you think I am kind of thing. And the whole movie is kind of like a redemption arc of his character of being a yeah. hero. That's kind of like a redemption for both of them. It's like yeah. both of them re- redeeming themselves and shit like that. So it's funny that uh, they refer to Logan as the like anchor of the of the universe that they, you know, the, the timeline starts being screwed up because they lost him. So he had to eventually learn to become the anchor, not only for himself, but for the fucking universe. I think that whole part was convoluted. I kind of didn't get it, or I feel like they didn't really explain it as well as they could have. But again, time travel, multiverse shit, Terminator, and Back to the Future. Those are the only two, I think, that land the whole time travel thing with me anyway. And speaking of Back to the Future, uh, I love the little tap back to to Huey Lewis during the montage of meeting all the Wolverines. You get a nice little, uh, you know, Huey Lewis musical tribute where it's like, all right, you get a little Back to the Future. We're traveling through time. At one point, we get more cameos. Um, We see Jennifer Garner as Elektra. We see Channing Tatum as Gambit, which... There was talks of him being Gambit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gambit like movie. fucking 15 years ago. Well, they were I, joking so, man. I, I get the joke. You know what? Gambit's one of my favorite characters, and you just poking fun out of him, at him the entire fucking time. It Dude, makes me do a joke. Poking. Yeah, he, no. So as as far as I think his, his coat and like the rubber and his haircut and the purple yeah, and even fine. like the effects on the card and on the bow looked good. But his accent was fucking dog shit. Yeah, we don't be knowing that it ain't coming off without that dome gonna come off with I'm so sorry, beautiful. I want this to be gentle. Who is your dialect coach? The minions? That was the so, joke, though. They, yeah, they but could, then they, they make could... fun of him the whole movie or the whole scene about it. And, like, you're just, why bring Gambit in if you're just gonna make him a fucking joke? And uh, that pissed me off because Gambit's one of my favorites. There was only, like, two times that I popped in the movie and fucking blade walking in, dude. Jesus oh, I, Christ. I love seeing that. Wesley Snipes back on screen. He yeah. looked a little, he looked a little little older, obviously. Well, but, he's getting up there, and he's he's a little thin. Which I'm glad they didn't really they didn't put CGI to like de-age him too much because he's supposed to be in yeah. the void. So he's been there for who knows how long. Give me fucking Wesley Snipes Blade all day long. I'd honestly oh. rather see another like a Blade Four with him in it. No you offense I mean? to, the, to the new guy. No offense to him. He's, he he might be a great actor, but Wesley Snipes just like Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Wesley yeah. Snipes is Blade. This was another example of them poking fun at a certain thing that Disney is doing, but then they still continue to do it. So he's like, I'm Blade, and I'm the only Blade. And there's only been one Blade. There's only ever going to be one Blade. And he looks at the camera, because <laughs> Blade has been in production hell for like fucking five years. They just got another director. Not another yeah. one. Another one, dude. The, the script's getting rewritten, and that's another discussion for another day too, but that movie's been in production hell. So it's poking fun of yourself and then still doing the exact same thing that you're making fun of yourself on fucking screen, which I think is fucking dumb. The one scene that really sticks in my my head was the 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 fight in the car where they were that just was my going back scene. and forth. The way they utilized the car was very well played. That scene reminded me a lot of the opening chase scene in Deadpool 1 when he's fighting the guy in the yes. van and he's like yes. banging him off. He's like outside of the car. It kind of reminded me of that. But there's a whole joke throughout the movie because at one time when Wade stopped being Deadpool for a while, he was like a used car salesman and he, for some reason, hates Honda Odysseys. This isn't a car. This is a Honda fucking Odyssey. Throttle response sucks a cock. And they end up getting a Honda Odyssey <laughs> He fucking hates the Honda Odyssey, and they end up fighting in the Honda Odyssey, and that's probably my favorite fight scene in the whole movie, of them being confined in the car. I take it all back. The Honda Odyssey fucks hard. Daphne Keene is back. The same Daphne Keene is back, which uh, they spoiled in the trailer for some reason. Again, X-23 for me is one of those tokenized characters. It's a female Wolverine. That's kind of what she is in the comics anyway, and I've never been a fan of her. But she was good in Logan. Daphne Keene was good in it, and it was cool to see her back, but they spoiled in the trailer, which was fucking dumb. She's good in the movie. She's she she's fine. The third act felt like it kind of lacked a little bit of a punch for me. Uh, it didn't necessarily feel like there was a lot at stake. 
I feel like the movie peaked in the second act and then it just kind of stayed there. It didn't get better. I want to say they relied a little bit on the cameos to kind of bring them up a little bit towards the end where it was like, ah, yes, then we'll do this at the end and this will do yeah, that. Yeah. Like- the movie has a formula. Action scene, talking for 10, 15 minutes with a handful of jokes, and then another fight scene, then cameos. And then another talking scene with jokes, and then more cameos, and then a fight scene. And then more talking with an exposition dump with more jokes, and then a cameo, and then a fight scene. And well, Don't forget the do- jokes in the fight scene with a cameo. <laughs> I think the exposition dumps in the movie slowed it down. Just be so so there's actually one part in the movie where Wade makes a joke and he's like he says something about uh, long exposition dumps. But if you're going to crack a joke about long exposition dumps while you're doing a long exposition dump, one it's not funny and two it doesn't excuse the writing. It makes the writing bad. You're just acknowledging it basically in a fucking joke. If you stopped doing long exposition dumps after that, then it's like okay, we acknowledged it, now we're going to stop doing it. But then they kept doing it. So it was like okay, so he Yes, you see yourself, but... This movie has a thing where it makes fun of something for being bad, and then look at us for making fun of the thing that's bad, but then we still do the thing that's bad. But it's funny, it's it's meta, because we made fun of ourselves for saying the thing. If you go into this movie thinking it's going to be like an Avengers-type like hype movie like that, you're going to be disappointed. If you go into it knowing that it's a cameo-driven fan service, then you're going to enjoy it, which that's the way I, my mindset was. I'm not the biggest fan of Ryan Reynolds. I think most of his comedy hasn't landed with me personally anyway, ever since like the Van Wilder days. But Deadpool 1 and 2 are one of the occasions, Hannibal King from Blade 3 are some of the occasions where his comedy landed with me. This movie, his his cursing feels organic. With Hugh, it feels forced. It feels like he's that that guy who doesn't usually curse, but he's trying to curse around the guy who curses a lot to like say, look, I curse a lot too. Fuck, 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 fuck. Motherfucker. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fucking clue with economic fixings, do you? Fucking wish. You're a fucking joke. I've been one of the two more very fucking years. Motherfucker, I wish I could say you'd die alone. Maybe because you haven't heard him say fuck in any of the X-Men movies, it's kind of weird to see Wolverine say fuck. Yeah, well, he, he did curse once. Yeah, I mean, he, once, not seventeen times in yeah, one scene, like he does. I do. think, I think so. If 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 that's your reasoning, if you have Wolverine cursing more than Deadpool in a Deadpool movie, who is known for fucking cursing constantly, it just seems out of place. If you're known for doing stand-up comedy and you have a lot of raunchy jokes, and that's your thing, and then I do your exact shtick, it kind of takes away from your performance because I'm just doing a, a version of you that's not as good. Does that make sense? You can't have a Batman movie where they're say, where everyone else is saying, I'm Batman, before Batman shows up and says, I'm Batman. You can't have a Batman movie if Robin is wearing a fucking Batman suit. Be Robin, dude. I think, as far as Deadpool movies, it's third. By a landslide. Yes, this is the third movie in the trilogy. No, no. <laughs> the first I, I, one, I, and the second one, no. the third one. <laughs> yes. no, this well, is the wait. third one. It falls in that order... For me, as well as which ones I like the best. As of right now, I don't know. I give it a solid seven. I would give it a solid five or six. No Way Home and this are the best things that Disney has done since Endgame. But like I said, it's not exactly a high bar. That I agree with you. Yeah, I would definitely give it a solid six. It is, uh, I think a lot of it was definitely helped by some of the song choices. I never expected to, to really need to see Hugh Jackman lit up like a Christmas tree to Madonna. But now I'm not complaining about it either. I'll tell you my favorite part of the fucking movie. Fucking Big Daddy ripped Hugh Jackman. So they're like holding hands to like destroy the fucking time. His glistening body. Oh, dude, his fucking outfit just burns off and the cow stays on. Bro, he must have taken every steroid on the fucking planet (laughs) a month before the scene. And he's just fucking jacked and ripped. And oh, daddy. I don't That's know, dude. I saw what Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill's arm was the size of my fucking thigh. <laughs> <laughs> like I saw that, I'm like, God damn. The one scene where Deadpool uses Nice Pool as a shield, and then Wolverine just picks up the dog and walks across screen. Even his the, his arm is bull- <laughs> the size of the fucking dog that he's carrying <laughs> across the screen, and you're just yeah. not supposed to notice that. But I think it would have been smart on Disney's part to have teased something for upcoming MCU projects to get you excited. I don't think it is going to be tied into anything. Going on. No, that's true because you, you know you know what drops next month? Agatha. And then Ironheart is next soon, isn't she? Or whatever. What is it called? 
Yeah, Ironheart and Captain Black Falcon guy. Do you think this movie does anything to help the existing MCU? Not to help or hurt. It's just a fun, a fun kind, kind of, of like a, what a, if a blip of, on the radar, like yeah, a, just a, a, another multiverse thing happened that no one ever knows about. It's just Deadpool does his thing, goes through the multiverses, comes back, saves his world, and that's it. One thing I will say, uh, it's probably fucking stupid. The the Indian guy from the first Deadpool, I wish we had a little bit of an interaction with him and Deadpool. Maybe just in a, in him driving Wolverine and Deadpool somewhere, and they just yeah, have an interaction. Yeah. Well, they have all like the movie one characters and the movie two characters in the the living room. In his house, the, the, yeah. In but... the house, sitting at the table, and then they kind of don't really do much with him. One of my favorite parts of Deadpool 2, minus Josh Brolin's Cable, which I wish he was there as well, but Colossus yeah. was fucking hilarious. Aesthetically, he was done right. They finally did his character justice on the way he looked. He had the accent, and he was fucking funny. Did he look a little smaller in this one? No. He, he was about the same size. Look a little Maybe. smaller. I don't know. Cool. I, I didn't I didn't notice it, but I wanted more Colossus. Uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead was barely in it. You know, so you didn't get her, and you didn't get, uh, like, Domino, or uh, what's her name? The, the yeah, Asian girl was. with the, the, the color fire. I also liked Gina Carano in the first movie, too, but Disney's not bringing her back. They're in a lawsuit right now. Oh, are they? From what yeah. now? Uh, that when they fired her from the Mandalorian. That's fair. Remember that's... the whole the whole beep bop boop and the political thing? Yeah, I, I forgot about that. That's still going on. That's been what three years? Disney just tried to dismiss it in court, and they they denied it. It's going to trial. Well, good. I hope she wins. <laughs> I, honestly. All right. So wow. that was Deadpool Wolverine. And on that note, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with Josh, Leo, and myself, checking out the video for a little bit. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. And from myself, Josh, and Leo, until the next time, guys, later. Bye.